All right, I think we're live. Perfect. I'm going to give my buddy Phil here a moment to let me know for sure we're good to go. Awesome. Yeah, looks like we are. So apologies, everybody, for that. This is like one of the first times we're doing one of these live sessions. Uh, we want to help it, you know, make you guys uh, easier access to our content, basically. So we decided to switch to YouTube lives. Um, so hopefully uh, this will be a first of many, uh, not many mistakes, but just a first of many different new uh, ways to sh uh, share and, you know, uh, see our content. So today we're going to start with part two of our uh, series where we are taking a look at our barrel nut. Uh, Phil, my uh, counterpart took a look at designing this and that was our part one but what we're going to do today is we're going to actually do part two we're going to see how we can manufacture um, this particular part right so we're going to take uh, a view at probably doing our first op with turning and we're going to do our second op with mill turn just so we can get all the features in there uh, we're going to be using our fusion 360 to do this so let me go ahead and jump in and let's get go ahead and get started so go ahead and do that all right, perfect. So Fusion should be up and running. And again, please, the chat is available if you want to use it. Feel free to go ahead and drop in questions and things like that if you want to, you know, see something cool. Uh, and Phil is going to let me know. He's going to be monitoring the chat, so he's going to let me know so I don't miss anything. All right. So, all right. So let's just jump in straight into Fusion. So, as you guys can see, we have our part up here. And this is the part that Phil tirelessly designed. Uh, it's quite simple, but I feel like it'd be a good part to kind of get, you know, uh, familiar with some of the commands on Fusion, some of the strategies, some of the different types of tool paths that we have. So that's what we're going to take a look at today, and we're going to explore those couple of features, all right? So um, in case something does happen, I got some insurance here because I did, you know, pre-program it just to be sure. Uh, so if anything does happen, I'll have examples to show you. But I'm going to take this from the beginning uh just kind of guide you on how we could set up right so just looking at this part myself i'm i know that i'm probably going to be doing two ops in two different ways i'm going to have a turn portion of this and there's also some features on here some geometric features that i'm going to use milling options with right so we're going to discuss turning and mill turn so in order to get this part started with our turning operations i'm probably going to just use a blank a uh, piece of round stock, right? That's where we're going to start off with. So let's go ahead and do that, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create a new setup. Creating a new setup involves a couple of things. Um, as far as, as long as we plug in these parameters perfectly, we can go ahead and quickly go through how we would set this up here. So Fusion is pretty intuitive as a software, which I kind of like because as you can see, it kind of automatically picks up a lot of the features and the par parameters and fills them in. Uh, for us. It found out the outer axis here, so it gives us our Z direction. I can flip that around, and I probably will do that just because it'll be easier to machine it from this particular section here. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and I don't have to uh, put in an X axis or anything like that. I'm trying to keep this really simple. So all I want to make sure ideally is make sure this is a turning or mill turn up type of setup, and I'm working on the right spindle. Uh, a lot of these other features in here that are usually added is, you know, you want to make sure that you have the proper uh, body selected for manufacturing. We can go ahead and add in the stock size as well. So we are starting from a blank piece of stock, right? We're not cheating in any way. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Use a fixed size cylinder. Um, let's go ahead and make this just a slightly little bit longer. So we've got something to hold on to our, in our chuck. So let's make it about three inches or so. Um, and let's go ahead and do one and a half inch piece of stock on the outside, right? And then what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to offset all of this from the front so that majority of my stocks is going to be held up in the back of the chuck here, all right? Um, and then let's throw in uh, a little bit of an offset here, something that we want to face off, all right? And, I, and that should be all of it. The last tab in here just discusses what G value you're working on. So I'll be working on G54 as my default. And there we go. So there's just a quick, simple way to set this up on Fusion. And now we're, we're going to go ahead and start applying those turning operations, right? So I'm going to tackle this from the outside first, and then I'm going to work my way in, inwards, all right? 
let's start off with a simple facing operation. Now Fusion is pretty cool at kind of finding out the tools that are already in the library and probably probably will try to autofill a lot of this. But let's go ahead and change up these tools so we can use a couple of different tools too. So the Fusion 360 library, if you guys aren't using that already, has a bunch of really cool default tools. Um, and these are just example tools that helps you throw toolpaths in in a quick uh, quick way. So let's go ahead and use some of the uh, turning tools in there. I'm just gonna choose this right hand operation, right hand tool right there. And that's how quick and simple it can actually get. I pretty much just picked a tool and Fusion already gives me my facing operation. Now I can obviously customize this as much as I want to. For example, changing speeds and feeds, uh, changing exactly where we need to face stock off of, you know, radial sorts of uh, clearances and heights radially. But I'm going to keep this very, very simple for all of us and just kind of go ahead and say, hey, you know what? I picked a tool. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and the job is done. Right. So that's really how quick and easy it is to just get this part faced off. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump in and we're going to do some uh, profiling on the outside. So let's go ahead and click on that. And again, super easy is I can just go ahead and again, it automatically picks up the tool from my previous operation or from the library, right? It's just recommending a good tool for us. Changing speeds and feeds. Again, multiple different things that you can go ahead, go ahead and do to customize this particular operation. But I wanna, again, like I said, I wanna keep this simple. So I'm just gonna actually go ahead and hit okay. The only thing I usually do uh, when I do my profile roughing on the outside is I like to make sure that I leave some stock, right? Uh, typically, I don't like to finish my part with this particular profile roughing operation. So I'll leave a little bit of stock and then maybe we want to even, you know, change our depth of cuts, things like that. Let's go ahead and put something a little smaller in there so we can kind of see uh, the actual cutting process there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Right. So I'm just going to highlight that operation again. So there we go. As we can see, Fusion goes ahead and cuts all the stock on the outside of the stock, rounds up our fillets. And even right here, just because I said, hey, I don't want to groove with this particular part, it's not even going to go ahead and do any sort of back cutting with the back of the tool. So if I want to, what I can do at this point is I can go ahead and actually do another profile roughing with a left-handed cutter so that I can get this fillet here on the back, back side. Right. So a couple of different ways that you can do that. You can also use a grooving uh, groove type of cutter to do this. Right. So let's go ahead and immediately soon after I'd finished off with that profile roughing. What I'd like to do is now typically you could start from scratch again. Right. You can start from scratch again and create a new profile finishing operation. But what I like to do is I like to cheat the code a little bit and I like to actually do derived operations myself. I like derived operations only because of the fact that it almost automates a lot of things here and cuts your programming time in half. Because what that does is it basically takes parameters off of that initial operation and then transfers it over into uh, the new operation that you're doing. So it's the same parameters, just a different type of operation, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this. And now I'm probably gonna go ahead and change the tool just so that maybe we have a little bit of variation, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use another tool from the Fusion 360 library. We can simplify things by just clicking on turning general right here. Let's go with the V-shape, a little diamond cutter. So let's go ahead with that. A little sharper points, smaller nose radius there. I guess it's a nice, nicer finish. And again, as you can see, I can change feeds and speeds at this point, right? A whole bunch of different customizing I can do. But again, just to kind of, you know, I don't want to say it repeatedly, but just to show you how simple it is, I can literally just pick a tool and hit OK. That's that's as good as it gets right there, right? So there we go. Well, honestly, with that, we got most of our turn operations done right here. Now, for the back half of this and for me to part this out, I can go ahead and probably, there's two ways to really do this. I can even use a uh, grooving operation to do this. So let's go ahead and do a grooving operation just so you guys can kind of see what that looks like. And let's go ahead and select a tool. Again, I'll take something off of the Fusion library here just to make sure we're all having kind of similar parts here. So tools, let's do an OD grooving tool. 
I got an OD grooving tool. This is a nice old trick here. So typically what I do is just to get a better view of the tool. I can, I know that this is now a round, rounded tool in there. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. So that nose radius right there. And what I can do is now, I know that all of this is pretty much roughed out, right? I really need to only concentrate on the back fillet here and parting this out. So what I can go ahead and do is I can drag my front right here, the front plane. So how I like to think about it is like between these two planes is where you're basically, these are your cutting zones, right? So depending on where they are, your toolpath will be only applied to features in that certain area, right? So let's go ahead and let's just say, hey, I want to maybe, you know, I can even snap to that particular point right there. That's how easy it is. Just have to zoom in close enough to do that, right? And I can even take my back and go a little bit further out. And let's just see what sort of operation we get there. So as you can see, Fusion will now do your fillet as well. And then immediately just keep grooving downwards and cut your part out of your piece of stuff. So there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, you can also use a turn part operation. Your turning part operation is pretty much just kind of a cutoff operation, right? So there's multiple ways to do it, kind of whichever works the best for you is how, how I like to think about it. So let's go ahead and do a full simulation now at this point, just to see where we are, if all the tool pads are probably being applied to it or if we need to make any changes, right? So I like to typically do a little bit of a 3D view here to do that. And let me center this in so we can get a better view of it. Let's go ahead and hit that play button and we'll run through this pretty quick. So where's our facing operation? Then we have that finishing operation right there and the roughing and here's our grooving tool, right? And just like that, we part it out and we are now ready for op number two, which is where we're gonna take this particular part and then we're going to insert it into a machine. And I have all that set up here ready to go. And what I typically am going to, well, I like to use my motor machines. I'll put in, uh, you know, my fourth axis in there, have that all set up, ready to go. Got my chuck ready. Got a three jaw chuck. So let's go ahead and put this piece of stock now from our op number one into our mill turn machine. And we're going to start op number two. Okay. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and start a new setup. And for a machine here, this is why I like the mill term part of this, or actually we just call it the milling portion of this, is the fact that we don't have turning uh, simulation with machines just yet. Hopefully Autodesk is seeing this and they're gonna throw that out there pretty quick. Um, but, uh, you know, fingers crossed. Uh, but we do have machine simulation for milling operations, right? So to, what I've gone and done here is I've taken a Haas VF4. Uh, it's got a uh, TR um, rotary fourth axis on it. So I'm going to go ahead and select that particular machine. Now, if you guys are interested in trying to find out, hey, how do you build out those machines? Uh, what's cool is you can actually get all of those machine files from the Fusion 360 machine library uh, for your setup. Let me just go ahead and click on that one more time so you guys can see what that looks like. And if you go into your Fusion 360 library, depending on the type of vendor, we have access to a bunch of different types of machines in here. So like I said, we're gonna be using the Haas VF4 and Haas has a bunch of different uh, machines in here and they do some, some of them actually come with the fourth axis as well. And all of this can be customized, edited. Typically, I if I need to go in and add a couple more components to just make sure that it uh, looks almost identical to the machine that I have uh, on the floor. I go ahead and make those changes using the machine builder option in Fusion 360. So there's a lot of lot of different ways that you can uh, customize, you know, your experience with Fusion. That's kind of the part of it I really like. So, all right. So let me just close out of that really quick and a couple more clicks here. Like I said, I use that specific machine that I've catered uh, to myself. Um, next thing is I'm going to make sure that the operation type is now actually set to milling instead of turning or, uh, turning and mill turn. I mean, you can kind of use the same, they're kind of interchangeable at this point. Uh, it's really depending on, you know, what are the type of operations you're working on, right? So I'm going to have it set to milling. Next thing is our orientation. Now in my machine, as you guys can see here, 
I'm still going to be going ahead and using cylindrical stock. I haven't gotten to the option yet. So let's jump into that really quickly. All right. So let me just jump into mode here. Let's go ahead and use my um, fixed eye cylinder one, once again. Let's do turning our mill turn. There we go. This gives us the opportunity to actually have our Z direction different if we need it. Okay. Um, and then next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to set this up. So I'm going to flip the Z axis. Because now in my machine, I'm going to have it set this way. All right. And hit OK. Oh, I, you know what? Thankfully being reminded here that there are a couple of operations we kind of missed out on, on the turning side. So let me jump back in there really quick before we proceed any further, right? I took you through facing, cutting the outside of the operations here to get our circular shape. But however, I did forget the inside. So again, I'm my apologies on that. I got a little too excited to jump into the Milton side of things. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So next process inside of here is I'm going to probably drill this material out of here uh, with a bigger drill and then do an internal profile so we can get the material cleaned out to size. And then we're going to run a threading operation so we can get our internal threads on here. Okay. So just to quickly tell you, um, if I jump back into the design portion of this, notice that um, we do have, I have two different components in here, right? And when we designed this, we actually had it set with threads as well, right? But that's the nice thing about having that design capability and the CAM capability all in one software is the fact that I could just come in here and in my timeline, look for that specific thread feature. And I'm sure maybe some of you agree with this, some of you might not agree with this, but when I like to use the threading operation in Fusion 360, I'd rather not have the thread in there modeled. I like to usually typically just have that, you know, as a cylindrical face. So for my convenience, I could just go ahead and just shut it off by right clicking and maybe suppressing the feature. And then as you notice here, now I have a fully cylindrical body. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can either suppress the feature or what I've also done here is I've basically edited the, uh, the thread uh, to instead of having actual 3D to be 3D modeled, it's just a cosmetic thread. So at least in that way, I can still select the cylindrical face without having to, you know, either suppress it or unsuppress that particular feature, right? So I just want to point that out very quickly to you before I proceeded onto the manufacturing side again. All right, so let me just get this out of the way. We don't really need that at this minute. So, okay, things on the outside are completed. So again, I shouldn't, I, uh, we'll probably group it afterwards, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert all those operations now in between here, right? So let's go ahead and let's get a drill in here. I'm going to do a drilling operation. Now, typically I would go ahead and center drill this first. So let's do a half inch spot drill. For my geometry, all I really need to do is select that middle cylindrical face and I can have it go in as further as I need, right? Okay. Uh, one thing I should check here very quickly is the fact that maybe we might want to change our we might want to change our Z direction here. That's kind of the fun part of this uh, that we figure out like well halfway through the program we might need to actually flip our Z direction here. So let's go ahead and do that and that's honestly very simple to do. All I really need to do is go ahead and here and say flip the Z axis. As you can see Fusion will automatically put all my stock to the back now because this is the section that I really would like to have uh, you know focus on and then just basically right clicking generating it automatically gives me all of my tool paths just flipped around right so our profile roughing is also completed finishing and now let's go ahead and add that spot drill really quick so I'm gonna go ahead and select a drilling cycle and then I am going to use that half inch spot drill I'm gonna select the geometry there we go now I can decide how much further I wanted to go in if I need to using the heights and offsets page here. Uh, we're going to go with that and we're going to hit OK. All right, so there's my spot drill operation, our piloting hole. Next thing what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually go uh, add a bigger drill in here and remove all that material on the inside. So I'm going to use this 7 8 drill here I have. 
again, basically selecting the geometry would be that center hole right there. As you can see, we get a little preview of the amount of material we're going to be cutting into. Now, obviously, I want to kind of go right through the part itself. So I can go into the Heights tab here. And there's a couple of different things I can do. I can either give it a negative offset so I can go further into the part. Or you can also just say, yeah, I want to go, you know, straight through the model. So I'm going to select model bottom as my endpoint. A couple of other cooler features here too is the fact that I can just click on this checkbox and have Fusion kind of do the math for me and offset the drill tip beyond uh, the part. And I also usually typically like to go just a little bit more so you get a nice cleaner exit through the hole there. All right. Uh, I'm probably not going to wrap it in right through just because uh, we could be using different types of drills. So I'm going to go ahead and do something either maybe a like chip break or something like a deep drill, right? At least in that way, I could have the opportunity to remove PEC material and remove material out of there without just drilling straight in. Hit OK. All right, there we go. So we got a drilling operation in there. Now what's cool is I can also, t I can use this, uh, I can use another profile roughing operation, similar to how I did it on the outside, but now I do it more on the inside, right? So let's go ahead and select a tool here. I do have a smaller tool here that I used. There we go. And then all I really need, the main critical thing here is to make sure that I'm set to inside profiling versus outside profiling. Again, change the speeds and fees as required. I'm just kind of skipping over that for right now, right? I do want to go from the front of the model all the way to the back of the model. And even if I wanted to go a little bit further out, I could do that just by offsetting it. In the radii, uh, I might make a couple of changes here just because I've already roughed out a lot of material So it doesn't really make sense for me to do a bunch of unnecessary passes, right? So what I'm probably going to do here is I'm going to change my inner radius to diameter and What's nice is I can just put the the drill diameter that I just used here so I can go in and put my 875 As a drill diameter that I just use so all that material is actually already cleared out so I don't need to use my uh, cutter here to cut air. Same thing for my clearance as well. I really don't need the clearance to be right dead center right there. So I can say diameter again for this. And maybe I typically go just a hair shire of the actual inner radius there. So I'm just going to leave it at 850 instead. All right. Um, at this point, what I really want to do is I just want to see what the operation looks like. Um, and also if I want to, I can kind of, you know, take it, uh, to zero stock. But like I said earlier, I'm not a big fan of doing that just with this particular cutter. But in this instance, I think I might just kind of, you know, cut it to zero. So then we're all, we're just kind of squared away with one, one particular operation here. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to hit okay. We'll see what sort of operation we get. All right. It's actually perfect. As you can see. Fusion doesn't waste its time cutting all that middle uh, material there because of we uh, because we offsetted it uh, based on that drill that we just used. So we'll have a couple of passes in here where it's going to rough everything out and even go all the way out through to the back of the side there. And everything's roughed out. Final op. This time, I promise, it's the final op. <laughs> is we're going to do the turning threading operation to do our threads on the inside here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and select a new tool. I do have a threading tool right here that I use, a little short stubbier guy. Select. And all of the tools that I'm actually using, uh, you know, for, for programming all this is highly customizable. Uh, and some of these are kind of based off of Fusion's library, but I have made some changes to them. So you might see shorter shank heights and things like that, right? So I'm going to go ahead and use that particular tool. Now, again, all I really need to do is say, pick my thread faces. So my cylindrical face right here. And you can already get a little preview of what Fusion is trying to do here. As you can see, we already have our passes calculated. And the confinement pretty much gives you the opportunity to either 
uh, put offsets from the start and stop cylindrical side of that. So as you can see here, by default, I have a 275 applied to my front, and that's the toolpath that we're seeing right here. And even for the back, if we wanted to maybe kind of, you know, offset that so it doesn't go all the way to the back and probably hit that um, face right here, I can go ahead and, oh, didn't mean to do 50, uh, half an inch, 50,000. So I can have it stop right before we even hit that back face, right? So again, depending on your tool, if you have the capability to do all the way to the back, you could do that. Or I also like to kind of cheat, do this too. Uh, with radii, uh, really nothing much to do here as well. I mean, I could probably change the clearances uh, a little bit, so I'm not retracting all the way to the center point. So let me go ahead and do that, and maybe let's make it um, 0.8 there. All right. Well, actually, I should probably do diameter and do 0.8. So basically what I did was instead of having the center be my clearance height, I just set it something to a little bit more closer where I'm actually machining. Next is the passage customization, right? So now typically we have a lot of people reach out and ask about thread depth and things like that. Machinist Handbook is the greatest, uh, I think, you know, documented uh, tool that can be used for these types of situations. But me personally, I will tell you the average, typically the, my thread depth varies a lot depending on the size of the cutter, the, the, the thread. But I see a lot of uh, variation between 40 to about 60,000. So again, that's going to change again, like I said, depending on the type of tool and thread. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll set it to 40 thou at the default um, and we'll see what it does. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And there's my threading operation. All right. Now, because I got a little too excited, right, previously and I grooved my part off already, what I can really, what I can do is I can simply take all the operations that I that were created afterwards, and simply either move it like this. So now we have that groove operation right set to the as our last op there, and now I actually have all the other operations running before we cut our part off, and that's I'm sure most of you would agree is ideal. So let's go ahead and simulate this and see what sort of operations we have now. So like I said, we had that facing operation, the roughing operation overall on the outside, and then we got the spot drill, a drilling operation, the ID roughing and finishing in this case, and here's that thread operation as well. And typically what I like to do is I like to turn the model off because then I can actually see the thread because if you noticed here, when I had the model turned on, I didn't see the thread, but then when I turn it off, I can actually see the stock now. And the reason why you're seeing this in red is because technically we are negative cutting. We're cutting into the material. So it's just saying that, hey, it's red. Uh, but we know that those are basically uh, the major diameter of our threads, right? So so there you go, just like that. I'm, hope, I'm sure I got all of it now. So apologies if I missed it on the early one. So now we're actually ready to take this over to our mill with our fourth axis complete this part with our mill turn operations. All right, so let's do that. I'm going to exit out of the simulation, turn the models back on. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up a new setup here for our mill turn. So I'm going to go ahead and do setup. It really depends on how and where you want to hold this part, right? Um, we can go ahead and let me make sure I have those stock fixed first. Just like that. Then I can either do, I can either really do a fixed size box too. It doesn't really matter too much. How It all depends on how it's going to be orientated in the machine and which side are we going to kind of offset it from, right? So here's what I will do. I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, I want this to be my, I'm going to do for orientation, I'm going to say Z face right here. For my stock box point or my stock point, I'm probably going to find the center of my part in the machine. Uh, I'm going to have this set to relative size box and probably no additional stock, right? So as you can see, the, the stock is almost pretty much size on side with my actual part, all right? One more thing I got to do is just got to flip that x-axis around and here we go. We are now ready to put this in our 
uh, fourth axis, right? Main thing, like I said, typically I like to highlight the fact that we want to make sure that we have the right body selected for manufacturing processes. Stocks ready to go. And then with part position, I can have that set up in my machine where I need it to be, right? So as you can see right here, I have a three jaw chuck. And I can center that, set it to where I need to. Make sure that it is centered on this way, right? So let's go ahead and move that down just a little bit so it looks a little realistic here. There we go. And we're also holding on by not a whole lot, but enough to basically do our operations in there. And that's the nice thing. I can just simply use these arrows to quickly uh, go ahead and um, associate that where it is in my part. All right. Let's see, we have we have a question. We have a question, it says, what is that button in the top right? I don't have that on my Fusion 360. Um, top right, where you go, right here? Is it, is it, is it this button right here that shows my amazing face? <laughs> uh, but there's, there's a range of different buttons up here um, that I think you might be talking about. This gives us access to our uh, preferences, settings, our risk account details, minor things like that. Uh, also, there's a great little button here that helps you have a direct link to learning and documentation, uh, kind of direct link to the community. So if you want to post questions, um, hopefully I think that's what you were talking about uh, from the question. Or is it or is it the button on the left-hand side? Okay, okay. Is it, you know what? I think I might know who this is. So I'm going to ask this question. Is it this button right here? There we go. I'm sure I'm sure this is the button right here that you're talking about. So, well, I'm glad you guys asked what that button is. That button is our very own created at NextGen Cam direct support button, right? Uh, I'm going I'm going to post the link uh, to downloading that specific add-on. Um, in the YouTube video after we've completed the stream here, it's going to be on there. Uh, but if you basically go to the Fusion 360 app, and I'll take you for a little stroll here as soon as we're done with the manufacturing side, and I'll show you how you can actually install that um, and have that running on Fusion 360. So basically, anytime you need us, you're just basically, we're, we're a click away. We're a click away. I think that was a well-positioned button. Uh, personally, so we're one click away and I'll show you how we can actually download and install this for Fusion 360. So you have questions, if you just want to get in touch with us, we have live support, live chat, uh, and we can uh, help you very quick uh, if you have any sort of issues on Fusion. All right, so hopefully I answered that question. Let's jump back into the manufacturing side here. Again, everything is good to go. I set this up and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And there we go. What I do like is that you get a view of what the uh, part will look like. So how I'm gonna touch this off in my machine is I'm gonna bring in my probe, I'm gonna touch off this face for my X, and I can touch off the top face here for my Z, right? Um, you know, might have to get a little creative on how we wanna do that top face Z, but as long as we have our top face probed up, we should be good to go, okay? And again, I picked you know, a, a spot that worked well for me. Maybe you want to use a different spot for the mill turn. That's kind of really, really up to you on, on how you want to set that up, right? All right, so let's jump into the mill turn features now. All I really need to do at this point is I need to make sure that I have these cut off, have my holes drilled out, and we add a chamfering option, right? So let's go ahead and get that started here. I'm going to start off with doing a 2D op. Now, really quick too, I am i didn't design this part, right? So I didn't design this part. I really don't know what the uh, the groove uh, size is, if it's tapered. I don't have the print in front of me. So what I can really, what I can do fast and quickly is kind of even just take inspection measurements off of my part to see what sort of tool I'm going to be using for this particular operation, right? So it looks like these are slanted, so I'm probably going to use a 3D operation to cut those slanted. And for the bottom here, that's just going to be a simple 2D flat face, right? So I can use the measuring tool, and I can see that the length here is 465. 
Now, if I know this designer as well as I hope I do, I think that is a 517. So we can use a half inch bull nose end mill, right? And that's kind of how I know that it's going to be a bull nose too, because if I click on here and get the radius, it tells me that it's a diameter of a 60 thou. So I can use a bull nose cutter with a corner radius of 60 thou um, and show you how I can do that, right? So let's see, we got one more question here. Can you import HSM Inventor Cam Tool libraries? Now, if you can export your uh, library from another Autodesk product, uh, depending on the the file type and the extension, you can actually import those into the Fusion library, right? So if I went to my tool library right here, I can simply right click on either my cloud or my local, doesn't really matter. Click on import libraries. And by clicking on that, as you can see, these are all of the different types of file types that Fusion can, uh, can upload. So if you're using a .tools type of extension, I'm pretty sure Inventor, PowerMill, all of those other Autodesk products out there, or even possibly some other CAM uh, softwares too, um, have the same type of uh, library format. So you can definitely import those into uh, Fusion 360. Okay. Hopefully I answered that question there. Um, let's go ahead and set up that operation here. So. What I'm going to start off with is I'm going to start off with a 3D contour operation. And I really like to use 3D contour operations for the sole fact that you can pretty much cut this entire thing, this entire groove here, in just one quick op, right? So you can either decide to rough this out first. That's up to you. So I'll show you how to kind of do both. And I'll use a pocket clearing operation here just to kind of show you how you would quickly rough that groove out. So if you're using a 3 8 let's see, Fusion picked up a tool for me. However, let me show you how I can actually customize this tool as well. I can simply edit the tool, right click and edit that tool. So 3 8 bullnose end mill, and I can change that corner radius if I wanted to, it's directly to a 60 thou. If, uh, if I was just trying to do a one pass type of operation, right? But again, the sharper the uh, tool nose radius, the more passes we can take and probably the better finish. So I'm gonna keep it on that, accept it. But I just wanna make sure you guys were aware of where you, you could change that if you needed it. Select the operation here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to the geometry tab, do a selection of what specific area am I gonna be roughing? So I can go ahead and say selection, choose that chain right there, right? Uh, and then in my passes tab, that's kind of where I control how much stock I'm going to leave. So let's just say we wanted to leave maybe um, just on the walls, I want to leave about 3,000 or so, right? But let's just cut that floor right to zero and be done with it, right? And we can all again, uh, change that step down to something a little bit smaller so we're taking more material off less cusps so let's go ahead and do maybe let's try 10,000 see what that looks like for us hit okay and there we go so that's the that's the what type of operation we're going to be looking at if we want to rough this out and also finish the floor at the same time right next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and add that 3d contour for our walls so let me jump on that really quick. Again, same operation. As you can see, Fusion being intuitive, grabbing that same tool. Now, all I really need to do is do another selection of it. Click on that chain. At this point in time, I can go ahead and give it, you know, either by maximum step down, how fine of step downs I want for a better finish, or what has been recently added and also a big fan of is the cusp height. So if you are sticking to a certain cusp height, which helps you kind of, you know, measure your uh, surface finishes, you can even add in a cusp height in this particular area right here, right? So they both kind of work interchangeably. You'll notice as soon as I make a change in my maximum step down, it also makes the change in the cusp height. So you can kind of, you know, use either one of these fields to decide how much you want to take down. And I'm going to hit OK. There we go. 
So pretty quick, pretty fast that we go ahead and rough and finish off the tapers in this. So let's take a quick simulated view and see what we have. Um, and what I can also do is simulate that with the machine so we can take a look at how it, how it actually looks in the machine process. The stock might look a little weird here because it looks like it's a square, but let me see if I can fix that. It's just awkward to me that that could possibly happen. So let me go ahead and fix it really quick so it actually looks like what we, what we see in our part here. So let's do from proceeding setup. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, and our stock point can't center this yet so I think we might have to go back to that so let's see can I go ahead and there we go that should help our simulation just a little bit better oh no, that should our Z, our Z will be a little unconstrained so just for the, just to keep this simple, I'll just go ahead and keep it set to this, and we'll we'll simulate that with the machine so we can see that operation take place in real time. So, go ahead and play here. This is after the roughing process. What I kind of like is also it gives you the opportunity to see, as you can see right here, I'm too close to the chuck, so I might even be getting these collisions telling me that hey, I might need to pick a different holder possibly either pull out the stock a little bit out more right or even maybe use a longer tool so that's what i also kind of like it gives us the ability to see all of that using machine simulation versus just only simulating the tool and the stock all right so at this point i would you know go ahead and either pick a different holder probably that would be the easiest thing to do because i want to keep my tool shorter so i'll probably go ahead and pick a different holder if I, you know, decide to run this. All right. So now that we got that done, and let's go ahead and finish this off by putting our drilling operation. Now you might be wondering, why isn't he doing all of those pockets? Well, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick and easy and fast way to take all of our operations and basically just kind of duplicate them or pattern them around. Uh, that's key word there, the patterning. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. So there's a spot drill that I just added to this operation. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then finally, we just need to drill that hole out through. So I'm going to do another drilling operation. Select the drill for that particular hole. And here's a pretty cool feature that I hope would be a good tip and trick for anybody out there using the drilling operation. If you hover over that particular hole, and if you're not close to your print, you don't really want to grab the measuring tool at this particular point to figure out what size that hole is. If you hover over it, it tells you the diameter of that particular hole. So very useful to go ahead and select your tool for that particular operation, right? So I have my 3 8 drill right here set up. I'm going to go ahead and pick that up for me. And in my geometry tab, all I really need to do is go ahead and select that cylindrical face, right? And then adjust in my height tab, I'll probably adjust the... Uh, Heights of how far I want to drill the tip through, and also add my a little bit of an offset. Just make sure we have a clean through hole, and I'll hit OK. So there we go. Now in combination, I have my pocket operation, my contour operation, the drill, and uh, the spot drill, and my final drilling hole. Right now, this is where the magic of the mill turn starts to happen. Is the fact that I can now either I could do do it two ways. In order to rotate my part and probably do this section, I can repeat all of these operations. Just, but the only difference now is I would have to turn on a feature. For example, let's just do one quick example so you can kind of see it. So, if I was to duplicate this operation here, and if I was to edit this, the only change I really need to make here would be to turn on this specific feature to orientation. That's where we get from our regular three axis milling into the whole conversation of mill turn, right? So now I can simply select my new Z axis right here, uh, flip that X axis so we're staying consistent with it, pick a new chain, 
and hit OK. So it's the same operation, but you'll notice that, oh, I might need to change those heights really quickly too. But ideally, what we're really doing here is we're, we're taking our toolpath, a three axis toolpath, and we're creating a uh, multi, uh, a fourth fourth axis, you could call it, or mill turn operation. So really, that's how fast you can go from just being three axis to a mill turn op, right? So that is option number one. Option number one, especially because given this part's you know symmetric geometry, might not be the most efficient way to do it, right? Now, if we only had a couple, if we had different geometries all over the, all over the cylindrical face here, it would be the only uh, way to do it. But since it is pretty symmetric, here's what I will do instead. So I'm going to go ahead and either suppress it, or I can also just delete that um, operation that we just created. So I still have my pocket, my my contour, the drill, and the and the drill hole, right? Spot drill. All I really need to do at this point is highlight all of the operations. I hold down the shift button, right click on it, and then I can say, hey, I want to throw all of these into a pattern. Right. For the pattern, as you'll notice, I get a little window that pops up. Say, how do you want to pattern this particular oper uh, all of these operations? What I'm looking for is a circular pattern right here. Go ahead and select a central axis to pattern this around. And I, l I like to play this game where I try to just guess how many times I do it. So I like to hit this little button here. It says, and up as many times I need to. And it looks like six might be the magic number. And it looks like it's right. And that's pretty much all I really need to do. So select all of the operations, create a pattern, give it the amount of times you need to pattern it around uh, a, a specific cylindrical face. And let's go ahead and hit OK. And now all of the operations that I did on just the first face have been patterned six times circularly for the whole part. And you can highlight it just to see how that looks like. So let's take a quick, quick look here at the uh, simulation with the machine. Now I know there's probably gonna be a little bit of uh, collisions and, and things like that, but I want, the main thing here is I want you to see how it looks it like when it runs. So let's hit play. Again, it looks like it's a, a square stock, but we're gonna go with that for right now. Here's just being just a little slow to graphically to calculate this. Hopefully it's not too bad uh, on the stream. But you'll notice after all the operations are done on the on, on the first face, it'll then rotate the part and then it'll basically apply all of the all of the other operations to all of the different faces. There's my collision alarm telling me that hey there is possible collision in here and like I said earlier I would probably end up, if I was to run this now, I would probably end up using a different holder for that. Um, so I can reduce all sorts of, you know, unnecessary collisions there. Let's see if, I'm just gonna glance at the chat here really quick to see if anything's popping up while this is going on. I'm sure at this point you probably have some questions like why is it so slow? Are we having graphics issues? Right? Um, I even have a question in here. Let's see, we said, um, yep, you can definitely reach us at any time. And that's why we have the uh, next gen direct link button there. So that we can hopefully help you out with these types of situations, right? So. So what you're going to end up here with is, as you saw, as you just saw here, rotate our part, and now we're actually cutting the other sides of our part. I do apologize; seem to be running a little slower here on my graphics side, but as you can see, though, we got all our, all all six sides machining right now. And that's pretty much in summary how we can take our barrel nut here through two different types of operations, our turning operations, and then we go through our mill turn operations, right? So in summary, 
like I said, take all of our roughing on the outside, facing it, drilling it, and then finishing the whole cylindrical face of it on the outside, and also the inside as well, even doing the internal thread on here using the threading feature. Then we took our part out of the, the lathe, and we're going to put it in our fourth axis in our rotary and complete the steps to machine the part with all of our three axis type of operations but also mill turn because we're using we're able to cut all of these different surfaces in one specific setup all right so again because i promise i wanted to show you how you can get in touch with us a lot easier by using the uh, fusion 360 button here uh, you can simply go to the utilities page here this will be one quick way to get to it and you can go to the add-ins and go to the fusion 360 app store what that's going to do is it's going to bring up your web browser and you can simply search for us say nextgencam.com here let's do that let's see if it pops up Might be not currently down. See. We can also send you a direct link to the installation file as well if you don't find it inside of the actual store. Let's see. I'm gonna try once more just to see if we pop up. It doesn't seem like we're popping up at this time, but typically what you probably would end up with is you'll find it right here. You would click on it and you will basically download the install file for it. After you hit the install file, you could probably try closing Fusion up and then opening it back up one more time. And you should see our NextGen Cam logo right here. And after you see that, again, as you can see, you can quickly go ahead and find all of our content for the video library, like classes, um, even technical support. If you want to initiate a case with us, maybe get in touch with you having issues with certain operations. Very quickly, you can just go ahead and initiate a case, for example. And as you can see, within inside of, within, inside of Fusion 360, it opens up a uh, ticket portal where you can go ahead and submit a ticket to us and we will soon be notified. And typically, we get to our tickets very fast. So you should hear from us uh, probably even within the first 10 minutes. Um, and we would either, you know, hopefully try to rectify your file remote or we can also jump into a call and we can talk you through the process. So a lot of easy ways to get in touch with us. And again, if you, if we will put the link to downloading that specific install file in the, the video here below. Uh, but thank you everybody for, for making it to our very first YouTube Live. I apologize if there's been a couple of hiccups here and there, uh, but hopefully this is how we want to start rolling out a lot of content to you. Uh, if you have any sort of comments, suggestions, please let us know. We're open to finding out what you want to see, what you want us to show you. So feel free to get in touch with us. Um, and as always, we're here to help. So hopefully you guys have a good weekend. And I will see you on the next one.